So all the photo gear in the world, all the training, all of the practice, everything that goes into your photography could end up not mattering at all if you don't plan ahead. So one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, that we always try to keep in mind here is plan ahead. Especially if you're gonna be going on to a page shoot or kind of like a long-term or long-distance photo trip, you wanna make sure you know everything you can possibly know before you get to your location. So just a couple of quick examples that we've run into just on both sides of the equation. We did a photo trip to North Carolina and coming from New York, that's a pretty hefty drive to North Carolina last year. And we planned ahead, we wanted to shoot waterfalls, we planned ahead, we got a book that we found, uh, we've talked about here by Kevin Adams, North Carolina Waterfalls. It comes with a map. You can see all the notes and everything, all the little stickies I have in here. We planned extensively and the few days that we were there worked out perfectly. All the notes that we took, all the planning that we did, we hit all the places that we wanted to hit at the time of day we wanted to hit them. Conditions were basically exactly what we had thought they were gonna be everything worked out just right. Not everything works out perfectly, but everything really worked out just as we had thought it was going to on that trip. We had planned ahead a lot. On the flip side of it, just last week, we were upstate New York in Minnewaska State Park on a very casual you know, photo trip. We we're gonna go do a few hikes looking for, again, for waterfalls. And we get to the park, it's like eight o'clock in the morning and you can't even get in until nine. The gates, so everything was gated up. You couldn't get into the park. We ended up having to drive out of the park and come back in, park on a dirt road, and come back in from uh, an outside location. And then we were able to visit the main part of the park later in the day. But a very simple Google search would have told us that you can't get into the park until 9 a.m. So it was a very casual day, so it really didn't matter. But just something like that could have ended up making a big difference. A couple of years ago, we were upstate again in, uh, in Ithaca, New York, uh, at the Cascadilla Trail. There's a lot of waterfalls along the trail. We had been there in the summertime. We wanted to go uh, in the wintertime. So we got there and everything was gated up. The whole park, the whole trail, the whole gorge is closed in the winter, I guess because of icing conditions. You know, mist comes up off of the waterfalls and ice is the path. The whole thing was gated off. We, It was like the highlight. It was what we wanted to do on the trip was see that in the winter. And we couldn't get in there at all. So we had to find some other things to do. But again, a little bit of research ahead of time could have shown us that we couldn't get in. We had to figure out something else to do. So a little bit of, even just a little bit or a lot of bit of planning ahead can make a huge difference. You know, you hate to, you know, even get be able to get to the location and maybe conditions aren't just right, but conditions were gonna be just right 12 hours from now, uh, but not really knowing, not really planning ahead, y your whole shot isn't as good as it could have been. Uh, you know, a simple app, we use this TPE app all the time that we've told you about here, tells you the direction of the sun uh, at different times and different locations, uh, you know, on different days during the year. You can get the angle of the sun, you can get the angle of the moon and figure out exactly where things are gonna be at exactly what time based on your location or the best location to be in to get that shot that you wanna get. So something like that for planning ahead, the TPE app is really great. And you know, you have the internet. You know, going back years ago when you know when I started out and we really didn't have the internet or it was you know not as robust as it is now, uh, we have to find books and things like that. I found all kinds of books. Um, I went up to Vermont years and years ago. Uh, you know, something simple like The Photographer's Guide to Vermont uh, by David Middleton. Uh, it's just a really nice book with a lot of good information. This one I found is from Arnold Kaplan, How to Find and Photograph photo scenes in Vermont, and it's you know basically like detailed maps of exactly what to look for, where to put your tripod, things like that. There's a wealth of information online, uh, not even if, even if you don't buy a book, even if you just read through uh, websites and things like that, there's a wealth of information online that you can find out all kinds of things before you go to your location, or if it's even worth it to go to that location. Now, the flip side of that is you don't really wanna necessarily be influenced by what other people are doing. And I find that a lot as, you know, I'll, as soon as we start researching a location, I'm gonna start seeing all of the photos that everyone else is taking there. And it's helpful to see that, but you also don't necessarily wanna be influenced by that. And, you know, maybe not take that shot that you would have taken otherwise, or try to avoid that and get something else and not get the full experience that you would have gotten. So there is a little bit of a tainting to the experience if you see all of that stuff ahead of time. It is kind of nice to walk into a, a situation, you know, completely blind and just, you know, 
exploring it and getting everything out of it that you possibly can. But if you can't get the location to that location, if the location is gated off or it's just totally the wrong time of day or the wrong time of year to do it, you know, that can really set you, uh, you know, set you back and, you know, really not give you the experience that you wanted or the photographs that you wanted out of that location. So, but we found overall over the past several years of doing this, that researching, planning ahead makes such, such a difference because sometimes it'll completely even change the course of what you wanted to do in the first place. You'll realize, you know what, you know, we wanted to go to location A and we started researching it and found out, you know what, it's probably not worth it to even go there, but locations B and C are nearby and those are going to be much more along the lines of what we want to do. We're going to get much more enjoyment out of that. So do your research, plan ahead, Make sure that you have the gear that you want to have. Make sure you know what the weather is going to be, obviously, so that if you need weather gear, uh, umbrellas, raincoats, things like that, you have that. Whatever kind of lenses you think you're going to need, whatever kind of other photo accessories you think you need, uh, the planning that you're going to do ahead uh, will make sure that you have everything uh, that you're going to need. Research camera shops in the area of where you're going to be. If you're going to be far from home, if something comes up, you need a quick repair need to replace something, if there's a camera shop nearby, know where it is ahead of time. Oh, and also another great resource is other photographers. Look up in the area that you're going to or the type of shooting that you're gonna be doing. Look up photographers on Instagram or Facebook. Photographers love to talk about the stuff that they shoot. And for the most part, we found that everyone is willing to share tips, information, ideas, techniques on how they've done certain things. It's a great resource online network. We, we deal with other photographers all the time, places that we're going, Disney related things, people have questions for us, we love sharing information. So other photographers are a great resource when you're planning for any kind of photo trip. All these little things actually you know, will go to adding to your experience and I guess more importantly, not taking away from your experience. You wanna be able to go with an artistic mind, you wanna be able to not have to be thinking about planning or figuring things out when you're getting to the location or where you're at the location, you want to have all that stuff taken care of beforehand. You know, we talk on here a lot about the equipment and things like that kind of getting out of the way from the artistic part of it so that you're not, you know, when you're trying to get a shot and you're getting set up, you're not messing around with settings and trying to figure things out because that's going to take away from the artistic part of it. You're going to want to have that stuff muscle memory. You're going to want to have to know all of your settings and everything and how your camera works beforehand so you're not it's not hampering your artistic experience. And the same thing goes with planning ahead with locations and research. Have all the stuff researched so you're not spending time on your phone, you know, Googling, you know, where is this? What's the best way to get to that? You, you've got all that stuff planned out already and you can just concentrate on the photography, the video, the art of what you're trying to do. So just a little bit of advice from us to you, something that we've learned over the years from experience, trust me, we've made the mistake many, many times of not planning ahead. Um, hopefully we've learned from that. I'm sure we're gonna make the mistake again, but definitely something that you wanna keep in mind, especially if you're gonna be going long-term or long distance on photo trips. So let us know down below if you have any comments or any questions. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time. <music>